the live on Facebook in the corner, please let me know because this is a part where I can't see. Oh, you've all done. Oh, is it? Live. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Live. We're live, did you say? We're live. Yeah. We're live. Hi. Oh, hello. Hi. 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 Facebook live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm just waiting for my screen to load up. So keep talking, girls. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 And the I'm, dogs I'm are sure saying you all recognise to... these ladies. Oh, hang on, here we are. <laughs> right, let me get you back on the screen. Just want to double check. Yeah. We're all there. We're there, you're there. Right, happy. Good evening, everybody. So, Good evening. Welcome to another, well, it's like a Brookside reunion, even though you ladies have all stayed friends for the last 30 years since um, you were in Brookside. Well, it's not quite 30 years, but Nick, get in there. Um, so, in the top uh, left, we've got Justine Kerrigan, who played... Tracy. Tracy Corkill. Uh, Paula. Paula Francis, who played... Diana I... Corkill. Diana Corkill. And Michelle Byatt, who played... Nikki. Nikki White. White, yes. And how are you all, ladies? Thank <laughs> you very much for joining me. You've stayed in especially for me, haven't you? Yes, we didn't yeah, go yeah. to our party, girls, did we? <laughs> bars and clubbing afterwards. I think I might take myself up to a concert afterwards. And I'm as fucked uh, as having a party and everything, and we never went. <laughs> so you thought you'd stay in with me anyway. Well, yeah. thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> Gratitudes. <laughs> well, first of all, obviously, thank you very much for uh, joining me. Uh, really much appreciated. So, are you ready for a nice stroll down memory lane? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because there's some questions about um, your, you know, your time after Brookside as well. Because um, there's Paul, there's a few things I want to talk to you about. And Nikki, if I'm, uh, Nikki, sorry, <gasps> sorry, first mistake, Michelle, <laughs> sorry, Michelle. <laughs> I can't believe I just called you Nikki, Michelle. Well, so people still you... call me Nikki. There's, I've got a neighbour who still shouts Nikki, <laughs> <laughs> and I had a chain on once, and I said, "Oh, I've got that chain on with Michelle," and I went. That's my name. <laughs> oh, God. And then a week later, she went, Nikki! <laughs> oh, isn't it scary when some people actually confuse uh, fiction with reality, though? Oh, we'll yeah. get into that anyway, because I'm sure you've all had experiences like that, haven't you? So, okay. Well, we'll press on. Are you ready for question one, ladies? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Justine, some of yours are different because we've obviously, this is part two yeah. of your interview, so we've spoken before, so... I'm going to I'm start just on this one. Michelle. <laughs> you, you know, well, we, this is the third time now, isn't it? <laughs> You're obviously a glutton for punishment, wanting to come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to start off with Paula and Michelle first. Um, I want to ask both of you, had you watched and been a fan of Brookside before you joined the cast? Who'd like to go, go first? first? Yes, yeah. go on, Paula. Oh, okay, <laughs> I was going to say, Michelle, do you, do you want, want to go, go first? first? <laughs> We're so polite. I'll go first then. Well, on, I was Paula. definitely, I was definitely a fan. I um, I used to go on a Saturday to to town to Elliot Clark on the train, and I'd come back and I'd go straight to my nana's and watch the omnibus. And um, when I actually got a part, she was absolutely over the moon, and I actually mm -hmm. took her to the set. Well, the the actual close, the and I um, got pictures yeah. taken by the sign with her. So. That was really lovely. So it was a, I was a big fan, yeah. Oh, great. So it must have been over the moon when you actually got the part then, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And Michelle? Yeah, I was definitely a fan. There was, um, I think everyone in Liverpool was a fan because it was such a, an iconic thing. And I'd auditioned a few times for, for Brookside before I got the, the part of Nikki. Um, oh. And yeah, and my brother and sister, Jane and Liam, they'd been in it a few episodes. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Then there was me. Um, so, yeah, we watched it, and all of us, you can imagine us all the buyers on the happy bus. Yeah. Going to, um, we were extras one time, and we, we thought we were going to be, like, in Hollywood or something. Yeah. Because we weren't. But um, <laughs> we went to Crosby Beach, I think, instead. Um, and, and so, yeah, we were fans. We loved it. And then, of course, when we I got to be in it, it was brilliant. And then as I was leaving, then our Paul came in, I think. Yes. Oh, no, hang on. Sharon, Sharon was in the mix somewhere as well. Sharon was in sort of like that and then Paul. Well, Paul played Mike Dixon and Paul, yeah. when he very first joined the cast, he used to have the um, 
it was like the uh, he was a James Dean fan or something. He had the leather jacket. Do you remember that? The white t-shirt and yeah, and his guitar. Well, yeah, Paul was Paul was actually off gonna gonna go off to university, mm. um, and then he went for the audition and 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 he, and he got the job. So yeah. So I'll tell you a secret, Michelle. I'm sure Paul will be delighted to know this. I actually, I, I, it's very funny. I was only 10 at the time, but when Mike first, very first came into it, I thought he was a cool dude with his leather jacket on. And I remember asking my mum, I said, can I have a, a jacket like that? Oh, I no. God love him. I think he hated that jacket, but... I bet he did. <laughs> and then he had to grow a beard, remember, when he went to Thailand or something? Yeah. That, that was when the drugs thing, wasn't it? When he Yeah, was with Claire. Planted. Oh, God, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, and it turned out to be Lindsay's boyfriend that planted on them. Yeah, yeah. and he did. He had a beard and stuff. Yeah, Barry had a beard like, for a while, didn't Bingy he? Attenborough? No, what was his name? The one in the jungle? Oh. David oh, Bellamy. Bellamy. <laughs> Who, sorry? David Bellamy. Bellamy. Oh, David Bellamy, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so... T- t- the point was, yes, we were all fans. Yes, and, it was a re- and it's a real family affair with you, isn't it, Michelle? Yeah, yeah. Real. Okay, well, Justine, this is um, just to take you in because you joined in 1985 with John McArdle, Kate Fitzgerald, and Jason Hope. So I imagine you must have felt pretty sad when Kate Fitzgerald left in 1987, although she did come back for a few more short but memorable stints. Um, so how did you feel when she was announcing that she'd li- when she was going to leave and John McArdle as well? Um, uh, when Kate left, it was a bit of a shock because. We were on set and she just come over and she said, oh, I'm not renewing my contract. I mean, you do kind of think, oh, what's going to happen? You know, yeah. are they going to be written out? You do think that. Mm. Um, it was like, no, 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 you know, the family's staying in. Mm. Um, and then, I mean, I kind of knew once Billy and Sheila got married, I, I knew that John and Sue wouldn't stay. Um, mm. And yeah, it was sad. Um it's funny because that little bit after sort of the older ones left, mm. I, um, I think I probably became a bit more confident because I didn't have them to have to rely on. You sort of come into your own and then I had my own crew. I had like Michelle and Paula came. So I was like, I had a peer group then. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it was like everyone had been so much older than me and then all of a sudden I had mates. Yes. Because there's that great period where you all live together, which I've got a question yeah. about for later, isn't there? So that must have and been going fun. to work every day was just such a laugh, wasn't it, Gail? Yeah, it was. It was brilliant. Yeah. And then we had a great social life as well, didn't we? I think we went to work straight from our social life sometimes, yes, didn't we? we did. <laughs> well, I mean, it's all happened yeah. on real life. I mean, you were all best friends on screen, and 30 years later, you're all still best mates. And, like, John O'Gorman, who played Tomo, um, he's still best mates with Jason Hope, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, love George. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's been invited. He, he said he'd have a word with Jason, but I'm sort of a little bit like, I'd love to be excited about it, but I think Jason's quite a private yeah. person, isn't he? Mm. From what you remember, so I don't know if it'll, that'll happen. Yeah. I still I want know. your brother to come on as well, Michelle. Well, our Paul's the same. Paul wouldn't come yeah. on, buddy girls. No. No, no he's really yeah. private too. Yeah, I mean, you just have to respect that, don't you? Of course. Of course yeah. But of course, he's up, the invitation's there for him anyway. Just so he knows. <laughs> so I'll just hold on to that 1% chance. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Paula and Michelle. Uh, Michelle, you joined in 1988. Paula in 1990. This is a two part question, uh, just to pick your brains. Can you remember your very first scene? And your very first day on set, as I imagine it must have been really very daunting, especially as you'd watched it before as well. Yeah. Do you want so to go first who would like time? to go first? Michelle. Oh, I'll go, I'll go. I do remember my first scene because it's so cringeworthy. I love your first scene. Oh, oh I mean, it's just like, I'm surprised Justine didn't say, oh, shut up. <laughs> And I said to him, and she said to her, and I said to him, I looked at him around, and I was turning around constantly. It's like, what? Oh, I thought it was funny. I thought, what a great, memorable first scene. So she And always do makeup as well. Yes. Like the 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 scene on the table. Do makeup. Our hair was horrendous, wasn't it? What was horrendous? Our hair was horrendous. Oh, yes, it was hideous. It was just like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. But Very I remember um, we filmed Justine. I think we were on location, weren't we, in St. Helens? In the hairdressers, yeah. I, I think oh. this is my recollection of it. Um, 
was this I said to him, she said blah blah blah. <laughs> but I remember that we were walking down the street and then they said some some technical term mm. and I was like, What was that? And just just seen tell me what it was. Um <laughs> So it was a bit weird, and also you do you do nearly I did a few times nearly say oh Tracy because you just do you know it, yeah. it doesn't matter how because, because you're so used to you've only just met them but your yeah. your brain is like oh do you know what I mean yeah so and I think I did say that a couple of times so I was like oh. <laughs> I don't remember yeah <laughs> but just he was just he was dead laid back though so she was brilliant she was just like oh yeah whatever. <laughs> And you hit it off. You did told I was hard work, hadn't you? I've been told that she was hard work, and then when I met her, and, and I was thinking, where is this hard work person? <laughs> I, I can't see that. She's brilliant because she was just like dead sarcastic as well. And I was like, oh, she. I went home to my mum, and mum said, what was it like? Was she? I said, oh, she's hysterical, eh? <laughs> and she wasn't really hard work, but so I, I, maybe she'll turn into some sort of monster. <laughs> and you did then on the second day. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, Paula. Okay, so I, I remember my first day because I didn't sleep the night before. Um, when you audition, sometimes you audition with the scene that you're going to do, and that's what happened to me. So I, I'd already learned the words before I'd even got the part because it wasn't that long. Yeah. But in the rehearsals, Rita Lena Lynn was the director, and she came over to me and she whispered, please know every line because you'll be overwhelmed tomorrow and i just went okay <laughs> and then i just i just no didn't sleep and i don't even remember the actual filming of it i just remember i hadn't slept and i was in knots inside but yeah. it was fine it was all good the only thing about my first day is i actually got a, a national newspaper review lovely and it wasn't it was it was a great review of of the episode and the yeah. scene but it said something about my appearance and when you're 21 and um, you're a girl in this society you like it was hair of ample bosom and crook teeth lovely oh, thank you for that i know, that's I know. Horrible. but my acting was good so it was okay yeah but why personal is that Can you remember the name of the writer it wasn't piers morgan was it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that that wasn't great and um i think afterwards i i learned angles really well yeah. you know <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Can, do, do you mind if i just do my scene this way yeah <laughs> From behind the couch. so i was actually told like, by a director once um could you do more um face front he said i think i know what's going on he said like an actor with a big nose, tries not to do a profile. He said, I can see what you're doing. So I, I guess it did stay with me a little bit for a while, but mm -hmm. you do, you, you have to leave it and, and move on. I think one of the things about acting is you can't be vain because yeah. as soon as you're vain, you've lost. Yeah. Are you sure that wasn't Justine the monster? <laughs> <laughs> In disguise. Yeah. I, like, but I, while you're on about Justine, I, I've got to say here, and it's not me being, um, you know, just over nice because we're all together and we're all friends. But acting with Justine and, and with you, Michelle, was so easy. Oh. Um, Justine's got such a, 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 a natural um, delivery as well. And I say that more than Michelle, not because you haven't got natural delivery, you're brilliant too. But I had more scenes, I think, later yeah. on. Yes. Oh, with, thank with, you. With, um, with just, and I had some very heavy scenes too. And yeah, it was, you you just made them dead easy and actually gives the floor to you. So that's that's wanna say that. Oh, thank you. That's, oh, that's really brilliant. Great. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for that, girls. Well, I, I, as I, you can I, see, she looks so much answers here. Well, <laughs> isn't isn't Justine the image of Anna Friel? I can't. <laughs> She's the image. You know when I see her on the screen in my obviously not oh my God. with your hair down. But when she, everything about her, her, her persona, I'm like, that's just D. Oh She's my God. image. I hadn't got it, but I'm getting it now. You see I what I mean? Seen, <laughs> just D's going like that. <laughs> I, 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 I had seen, seen it all the week and I was like, you're, you, you're the image of Anna Freel. Is it where she was oh. blonde? Yeah, but I don't know what it is.
is even even in the past when I've seen her with dark hair. It's just something yeah. about the. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how she looks like you because when I look at you now, she looks nothing like you. No, what Do you, you know what I mean? Now. It's like, and you I said that's a compliment. Well, yeah, yeah. Anna feels yeah. very gorgeous. Yeah. Well, isn't she? Oh, yeah. all right, Ian, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on. You're all gorgeous. How about that? <laughs> Can I, Paula, just to make you feel a bit better. Um, there was a thing about Tracy in the paper once that said she looks like she needs a good wash. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and she was voted the worst dressed um, soap character ever. What? Oh, I can't believe you were iconic you to teenage me. girls. <laughs> I once had a guy saying, I blame Tracy Corker for a generation of schoolgirls wanting to become hairdressers. Yeah. Being very <laughs> Well, Justine, actually, this is your next question because I have to ask you about this. Is after uh, Doreen up and left, Billy eventually got with Sheila Grant, as you remember. Uh, Rod was fine about it. Tracy wasn't. There were a few tense scenes with you and Sue Johnson, which I really liked. So I imagine they must have been great fun to work with, Sue Johnston. Yeah, yeah. And you saying you watched your game on that time. Before about Sue, I think I kind of started to learn to act when I was working with Sue. And she, she just would make it up your game. Mm. Not purposely, but you just would automatically up your game or try to. And I just remember thinking, I need to take this a lot more seriously now. Mm. I could look really crap. So I, she would make it actually look like a better actress. Mm. She was great. So I, but... I loved working with her. Yeah, she's, she was just... God, I don't think I've ever met anyone with more presence than Sue Johnson. Do, do mm. you have girls? Yeah. I work with her. I, I only worked, do you remember when we did the Playhouse and we did Mad Dogs in English? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well, Justine, there was one scene I liked where you turned around and um, you were actually quite scary, I've got to say, because you, you said it in such a cold, calculating way. Oh, you is that what I've got to in? Me here. Yeah. Looks you like want me dad, you're not going to get him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they were great scenes. Okay. Um, oh, this one's to all of you now. Um, so uh, have any of your younger members of your family seen any of your scenes in Brookside? And if so, what was their reaction? I'm, I'm generally interested in this because just to see what a younger generation would think of Brookside. So, Michelle, I'll come to you first. Um, no, I don't think they have. And my um my nieces and nephews, I have shown pictures of them to Diva, um, mm. my niece, and I go, Who's that? And she's like, No idea. Oh, really? And I'm like, Oh, have I changed that much then? No. I go, it's Auntie Schmel, and she's like, No, it's not you. And that's the end of the conversation. No way. Yeah. So you don't so, think that yes, so that is no, Ian. They said no. Oh, you've got to show them. You've got to show yeah. them. Especially those clips I've put on now. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Paula? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think my children were at all interested. And really? still aren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not even one bit. I've got to be honest. So I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I wish I could answer yes. But I don't think it's in a negative way. I just think, you know, obviously they've just seen me as 100% mum, which is Yeah, good. of course. This is mm. fine. I'm okay with that. Were they born when Brookside was on? Um, no, I, I was 28, so it was about four or five years later. So, you know, by the time they're of an age where they'd watch, they would, they, it, Brookside had finished by the time ah, right. they, they were watching things. So it's, um, but the, I think the heads at school, you know, like when you're changing from like the, the first primary school to the next school, you know, mums at the gates and the, and then the kids coming in and then they're coming home saying, were you on Brookside? I was like, oh yeah. So uh, where did you hear that? Well, the teacher said, and, and you know, Johnny said, yeah. so it must've been part of the conversation, but I think that's the most interest they've ever, and it, it was just because they wanted to know what the friends were talking about and that's it. Yeah, oh really? I'd be. I'm really interested to know what a new generation would think of it. But yeah, um, yeah, it would be interesting, wouldn't it? Justine, what about you? Um, oh, yeah, I know your daughter Holly. I'm friends with your daughter Holly. I know your daughter Holly yeah. um, likes. Brooks. And Holly's thirty, so Brookie was still on when Holly. Yeah. 
Holly was 11, I think, when it finished. Yeah. Um, but she's nearly 30. But like Maisie, Maisie's yeah, really to to and she's just not interested in it at all. Oh, no way. It's an interest. You know. Do you think that'll probably change when she gets older? Maybe like has kids and she might show her grandkids, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, she's just. But she's, she's just, just not, not that eyes. interested. You have not even shown us South. Um, no. Because I think that's a really cool episode. I think it looks really cinematic, and you know all the London scenes and stuff, and you and Sean. But no. My she's husband only watched South involved. for the first time the other week. <laughs> what was that? Sorry. My husband only watched South for the first time the other week. <laughs> oh no way! What did he think? <laughs> he liked it. Yeah. yeah. Was it? Yeah. I've never really asked this before. Did, uh, did Steve know you from Brookside when you two first met? Because I think you met after Brookside, hadn't you? Or was it? Yeah, before? it was after. It was because I'd been married before. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, no, he it, it just he he. I, I kept saying, you know, I've done this thing south, and you've got to see. I said the music's really good. I said I'm really proud of it. And then it, it was just the other week he went, oh, send it to me. I'll watch it in work on nights. So. <laughs> oh, cool. And he likes it. Well, it yeah, was a great yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. I know Justine told me last time that she had a limousine, was treated like a film star, and she wouldn't let Sean McGee in the limousine with her. <laughs> <laughs> so. hey Michelle, there is a bit of a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you two ever work? Did you two know Sean McGee? I know you were both in it at that time. Did you ever no, know? No, I there? didn't meet. Oh, I met Sean at your 18th, didn't I, Justine? Yeah. In Penny Lane, yeah. So I didn't work with him, but I, I met him. Yeah. Yeah. Real. Well, oh, yeah, Sean. great oh. actor. Um, he, I, like I said to you last time, he did look like a real hard knock because there was a scene in South where you knock on the door of, um, and an Irish guy answers and mm. the Irish guy intimidates Sean. And I'm just sat there thinking, no, no, no. Sean looks too hard to be intimidated by that Irish guy. No way. <laughs> yeah. So he, yeah. Yeah. He was but a bit like she, that. She, likes her, she used to like her boyfriend's dodgy. Mm, yeah. But, <laughs> well, we've got to talk about some of these as well as we come on. Okay. Ah, now, Justine and Michelle, there's one for you afterwards, Paula, but Justine and Michelle, this is one for both of you because I really love this. There was a few weeks in the summer of 1990 where Tracy and Nikki went off to Rhodes for a few weeks and you both had romances as well. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going like that? Are you... <laughs> I thought it was great, Michelle. Good. I'll, I'll come yeah. to you first, Michelle. Uh, please don't come to me first. Go to the monster. <laughs> do you, do you find think... those scenes embarrassing to look back on? I think it's held up really well. I thought my, <laughs> my kiss was so spectacular. <laughs> it's so authentic. <laughs> oh, I, I cringe every time. It's, you know, I said to the director, because basically I was just, to me, Nikki was just a mouthpiece who was there in the background. Yeah. And... And it was about Tracy and what was his name? Your one? <laughs> a a Aggie, was he? Tim and Aggie. Aki. Aki. I think so. Oh. I can't remember now, off the top of my head. I've gone. I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> him. And so it was more about them. And then Brian, the director, I was like, please, Brian, please don't make me kiss him. It's not necessary. <laughs> and he was like, no, he loved it though, wasn't he? He was just a little minx yeah. and he was like, oh, well, I think you really should. And I was like, please don't. <laughs> and every time that comes on, my stomach drops. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, really? Because, I, I mean, these guys, I'm sure they were probably only maybe 30, but to us, my yeah. one especially was no, 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 no. Sorry. 150, he was so old. Yeah. When they, when you that age, Adam and the Ants. They didn't do it with Adam and the Ants. <laughs> well, what the twist was, they were, they had a bet on, didn't they, these two lads? And then the one lad, because they wanted to uh, basically said, like, I bet you I can get with Tracy and I bet you I can get with Nikki. Um, and then the twist was, the lad actually did genuinely fall in love with the Tracy character, didn't he? Of course. Ooh. And I wonder why he didn't fall in love with Nikki. <laughs> well, I imagine that you've had a great kiss. time off. It must have been like, I'm not kissing her for the rest of my life. <laughs> so how long were you in Rhodes for then? Did you film that over a week? It was, it was only a week. <laughs> week. Yeah. Remember we used to shout out the window to people. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have people recognise you over there? Um, I 
don't I think they so I remember. Do, weren't they filming something else as well? The Mersey Beat? Waterfront or something. Oh, Waterfront at the same oh, yeah. time. Yeah. Oh. Do you know there was that actor who was in it? And he was shouting at the... <laughs> trying to get water. So I stuck a T-shirt up. Remember I had like a dead tight dress on? I stuck a T-shirt up my dress and pretended to be pregnant. Yes! <laughs> reception to give us water. It was this really nice hotel. And then, was this in the middle of the night or something? It was about four o'clock in the morning. Me oh. and Madonna and Francis Harcombe had a water fight. And I remember us <laughs> lying on the couch the next day going, please don't make us go in the sun. We can't oh, see. No. So what time, if you were up till four o'clock, what time did you have to be up? Seven. Seven? Seven for filming. Oh, well, yeah. you were young, you could cope with it, couldn't you? The thing is, when you're young, you're fine, aren't you? You couldn't do yeah. that now. Taking off seven years to bounce back. Oh, well, nowadays I'm in bed for like, you know, I've had enough by about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. I used to go all night. Now I'm just old and boring now. Lim was giving us Diora lights. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It, it was it was brilliant. It was a good laugh, wasn't it? No, oh, yeah, you, you must have been made up to be able to go to Rose for a holiday. Did it feel like you were really on holiday or was it a lot of work? Did you get much sightseeing in or...? We got a lot of drinks today. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't get any, we didn't do any sightseeing because I think we were sort of out in the wilderness. Yeah, you we were, were sightseeing okay. as we were filming, really, weren't we? Because we went to Lindos, we went to Antony. That's Kirk, right. Yeah. Um, and some other beach, some really nice beach, but um, yeah, we 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 didn't we didn't do anything ourselves, but we were in Falaraki every night. Mm. Sounds good. What a lovely way to earn a living, eh? Yeah. Beautiful scenery. <laughs> okay. Well, Paula, um, as we were discussing earlier, it was established quite early on that Diane had, um, uh, was it learning difficulties? So, um, the first year... She couldn't year, read or write, could she? That's right. The first year, um, it was not in the script at all, but I think you oh, shared right, a, a scene this week where, uh, with the cards, and I was counting, and, um, and then I got upset because of you. Michelle. <laughs> oh yes, Michelle, you were very yeah. mean to her. So, I anyway, really was, but then I'm quite sure I taught you to read at the end. Yeah, you, well, maybe. You did. Um, but I worked in a pharmacy as well, so it was quite controversial. So what happened in that scene? I cried. And what happens, I think, sometimes in a soap, when an actor, actress cries and they go, oh, they can cry. So I had quite a bit of crying after that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and she didn't use tear stick as well. She's cheap. So... Yeah, after that, because, I, you know, the number, I was a numerous, illiterate, um, it was quite a, a big, heavy storyline and, you know, big responsibility when you're so young because, you know, all of the soaps, I think they still do it now, you mm. end up doing lots of interviews, not just with papers, but with um, in TV interviews and also then they send you to like helplines and I'm like, yeah. I I'm not qualified to speak to people. But um, I remember going to a school once, I didn't say no to this, just to speak to, um, it was a school for adults that had slipped through the net mm. for whatever reason in their background, they hadn't learned to read or write. And I love doing that because, you know, I wasn't there to, to do anything more than just say, you know, we're bringing this to the attention of everyone. It's it shouldn't be a stigma and I thought that was great um, yeah. but and well, it was interesting that was as first, well a first for soaps wasn't it to somebody that couldn't read or write was that a first for soaps I can't I, I think so I think that and the date rape one yeah I think yeah they're both, they're both the first I think um you know it was good that it was covered but um and every soap does have one where somebody's a little bit they, they seem less intelligent so I kind of fitted into that bracket which was great yeah. um, it wasn't so great when a family member rang my mum and said can't our Paula read all right <laughs> oh god seriously I mean it was oh, a long no. lost cousin but even so you know I just had to go oh well my actor must be good then mustn't he yeah. yes of course well I did feel sorry for Diana she I, she was quite vulnerable compared to Nikki and Tracy she was a lot more vulnerable wasn't she and sensitive um, she, she sensitive was, she was definitely more vulnerable but sometimes when i've seen those scenes that you've shared just recently i think there was another little like she was quite manipulative as well yeah. read books and like she kind of was like no you're you're gonna do this and you're gonna go so 
she was strong in some ways, but yeah, she was um, sensitive, definitely. Yeah, because um, I noticed she was quite bossy, actually, wasn't she? The scene I put on this morning where she was like, uh, oh, can you go and get us the new washing line? And oh, you need to do the washing up. Yeah, you? and how many people does it take to empty a cupboard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that period, but we're coming to that shortly. So, okay, question five. Um, Oh, now I wanted to ask all three of you this same question, um, as it's nice to remember members of cast who are sadly no longer with us. Um, we were talking about it at the very beginning. Can you recall some of your memories of working with the late, great Gladys Ambrose, who played Julia Brogan, who is a true but underrated soap legend, I think. Oh, I'm not sure lots of people first. would agree. So, Justine, I'll come to you first, because I know she was your gran in there. I, I saw the scene where you called her a stupid bitch, by the way. <laughs> what? Um, I did panto with Gladys and we shared a changing room, um, a dressing room rather, and I, I had a ball with her. She was hysterical um, and I'd never done stage before, so it was great because she was teaching me loads as well, um, but she was great on set. I mean, I don't think I realised how funny she was at the time. And if you look back now, she was a genius, comedy-wise. She just honestly could just come in and say normal lines and just make you laugh. Yeah, she was just, she just made the character brilliant. I honestly don't think I actually, re to be honest, I, I, I didn't really watch it because I was out all the time. Mm. Well, you are because you were young then, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, and you don't really notice at the time on the set all the time, but watching them back, she was, she was brilliant. Yeah, oh, there's so many funny, I don't think it was ever a scene where she didn't make me laugh. Yeah. Um, Paula, great in the hairdressers. Sorry. Oh, go on, you go on, say it. Yeah, she was great in the hairdressers. That really. Oh, yeah, when she was working with Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she felt very grand and well to do, didn't she, when she worked there, didn't she? Yeah. Oh, she was very posh. Um, Paula, because I know well, that uh, you your character had quite a few scenes with Gladys, didn't you? So many. Uh, do you know, I've got that many memories with Gladys and I actually was on stage with her as well. Um, mm -hmm. with, I did some um, singing and her family do panto and I did a panto and she came to that too because her daughter runs um, panto from Doncaster. Mm -hmm. um, but really funny enough, you mentioned before about do people call you your character name? Gladys never called me Paula. She only ever called me Diana or Diane. Um, and and so she'd come in the morning. She'd go, "Oh, Diana, Diana!" And she and we always did line runs, and it was really funny because Jason um, once um, we were all together in this scene, and it, so we're in the green room before, and she was she always seemed a bit nervy, didn't she? Before she yeah, and she she was like, "Can we have a line run?" And Jason was like, uh, "I don't want to pee," and. Um, <laughs> So me and Glad I said, no, we'll go and do it. I, I don't mind if I peek. I really don't mind. <laughs> I I could feel when she didn't have the line run that she was on, but she was so funny. We went yeah. to Alton Towers and they tried to put it in flats. And you know, Alton Towers is like this with the hills and yeah. she had high heels on for that character. And this is testament to her knowing her character so well. She went, you can't put me in flats because I can't, I can't do um, this character in 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 flats, mm. and she, do you know what? Right, she just did these hills, and then we got to the bottom. I've got to say this memory though, because it was it's the corkscrew, I think it was. Yeah. And um, we were supposed to go on that, so they filmed us as it's taken off. We had to do the rise, and it's, as the really you know the bit when it's coming down. Yeah. There was a camera set just to get our faces, and she <laughs> she went all the way down the hill. She was going, oh my yeah. god, oh. But the public were in there too. <laughs> it's like by the time we got to the end of the hill, there was people following us, thinking something was going on. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to put a body double in for it. Oh, <laughs> oh did they? <laughs> they did. Because she couldn't. <laughs> she she couldn't no. go on the the corkscrew. Can you imagine? What a bit cruel, really. Whoever yeah. wrote that in. I couldn't do that now. <laughs> oh, I, I did it last year. I was screamed. No, I couldn't do it. I mean, no. She was the most lovely, gorgeous person, um, so kind, and yeah, she was just lovely. She was very glamorous in real life. Well, she yeah. was happy, hadn't she? Yeah. She did um, actually wear them shoes herself all the time, the court shoes, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> no way. 
Michelle, yeah. have you got memories of Gladys Ambrose? I do. Um, I remember, and as you Paula just said, she was quite nervous. She, I remember she'd said to me once, you're not nervous, are you, when you go on set? And I was like, no, no, not really. And she was like, oh, I get really nervous. And then I did Panto with her as well. But I, I can't remember, quite remember what happened, but there was a, what was that woman called, Justine, who came in and she lived in America in a car? Joan Turner. Joan Turner, yeah. Well, anyway, so I've completely gone off the subject of Gladys, but Black, she bought Joan Turner in and she was in the pantomime, but I think she got sacked in the end, Joan Turner. Because <laughs> she was slightly insane, wasn't she? Well, what did she play in um, Brookside? I can't remember, but... I remember us just being like this on set in Harry Cross's house. She like, was funny. So I, so I did that with her. And then she was at my 21st with Johnny. Remember Johnny, a husband? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, was my husband, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wasn't he Dutch or German or something? Oh, I don't know. But I remember then she, she was at my 21st and she, oh, she's on my video. Oh. <laughs> so you've all got great memories of her then, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, she is hilarious. She's <laughs> brilliant. Oh, thank you all for that. Okay. Next question. Um, for Paula. Uh, now, Diana and Rod had two wedding days, if you can remember, both having disastrous moments, um, obviously, I imagine, um, but they must, they must have been fun to work on because the first one, I think... Um, Rod got beat up, yeah. and then on the second one, I think the alarm went off when you were in the ceremony or something. Can you remember that? Um, I remember Justin, the first you were one. there as well, weren't you, on those? Yeah. I remember the first one. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to call back. Um, sorry, one second. One. I'm just going to open the door, and then I'll be right back. Oh, sorry. carry on. Okay. It's only a boring bit anyway. Um, so yeah. I, was, I was in a, a wedding dress for three weeks on the three first weeks? one. So sometimes you have a pre-shoot, then the week of the shoot, and then you've got pickups. So if they've missed a bit, yeah. And I, I think my hair was curly, and I'd put, I'd put my own heated rollers in. And one day, and I was on seven-hour days, and it's not hard work. I'm not saying it was hard work, but you know, you're learning your lines as well. And yeah. so you're getting up, and I'd put my heated rollers in. Went in this wedding dress, and, and this one day I came in. I think it must have been on the pickups, and they changed the order. And I had straight hair. Oh, so no. I took my heated rollers out. It was Kaylee and Lynn threw me in the sink and had to wash my hair and straighten it. So um, I've got more memories of that than the actual storyline. <laughs> Sorry. If, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> they're the things that happened though. And then um, the second wedding, I think it was just like a, a normal outfit. And I don't remember anything major going on on that. Um, no, I think you had a. They had a, a party in their garden afterwards, didn't they? That's yeah. right, yeah, like a surprise yeah. party. Because mm. I remember that was when Jackie Corkle had just come in it as well, because she was really quite brutal in those early days, Jackie Corkle, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks for that, Paula. Um, Michelle, ah, because I've been asked to ask you this as well, but I wanted to ask you it personally myself. In between appearances in Brookside, you actually appeared in a couple of episodes of the classic ITV sitcom set in Liverpool, watching, playing Liza Tarbuck's mate. Um, so ha I have to ask you about working on that. Can you remember much about that? Yeah, I can remember. It was great. Um, because I was on not on a I was on a recurring contract, so I could go off and, and do other things, whereas like Justine and Paul, I think we're on, uh, you know, set. They had to. They couldn't go off, could you, girls, and, and do yeah. stuff. So, um, yeah, it was brilliant. She was really funny. Lisa Tarbuck. She's yeah. hysterical. She's a bit like you, Justine. Just you know, dead blase. And and um, so it was only a couple of episodes, really. But I couldn't hear it, you know, on on um, on the Facebook. The sound wasn't on. Oh. I showed it to um, Melina, and she was like, "What's that dreadful noise?" <laughs> because it was just like. Ee! <laughs> so um but no it was great it was really good fun and they were really nice both of them yeah really oh, well, yeah, yeah they were you know you, it was a bit like us you know that relationship when i was get, when yeah. i got the makeup done and they were made me feel really really <laughs> welcome and stuff and yeah. they, were, they just had great banter so it was just like us really yeah um yeah it was it was good well obviously i'll just ask you this one thing because i know lots of people ask this 
What happened to Emma Ray? She's left the industry of her own accord, hasn't she? I don't know, you know, I, I because I only really ever worked with her on that, and then that was that was the end of it. Um, she was so talented. I thought she was great. Did somebody she's say great. she's gone? She's gone somewhere abroad or something? Somebody had told me uh, mm-hmm. that she's gone abroad and she's become a nanny. But then I also heard that she'd run a drama class, so I don't know. But somebody was pretty certain that she'd moved away and uh, she's a nanny now. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think was that the only thing? Oh no, she did. Someone said she did doctors or something. I think, yeah, and there was a sitcom after, or a, a comedy, My Wonderful Life or something. She had an oddball boyfriend or something, which was a bit like, you mm. know, you Wasn't know. that Lisa Tarbuck, My Wonderful Life? Oh, no, that was Linda Green. She did, didn't she? Linda Green, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, my, um, I, my, or it's a wonderful, something like that. Anyway, I can't remember the title of the other one, but I loved watching anyway. But everybody's mystery, everybody's always asking about what happened to Emma Ray, so. Yeah, I don't know. And it's funny when you look when I look back and watch it and all, all the characters that were in it, it was like, wow, there's some um, great actors in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was like um, a young Perry Fenwick. Fenwick I yeah. Think. Well, yeah. yeah, Perry, they went out with each other, Perry and Emma. Yeah. Oh, did they? What, in real life? Yeah, they were, yeah. Oh, no way. Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you for mm-hmm. that. Because oh, he's never in obviously in East End. Is he still in East Enders? Billy Cork? <laughs> Not Billy Cork, yeah, sorry, Billy Mitchell, sorry. I think is he? I think he is. I think so, yeah. I don't well, I don't watch it because I'm me like Paula, we're always teaching in the night time, aren't we? Oh, so. I haven't seen it for years, but I'm sure he's still in that like, because obviously that's the first person I think of. And the, the yeah. one who's married to Pamela is now well, he was in the bill, and I've seen him quite a few in other things. Yeah, Perry was married to that girl. She was on Strictly, wasn't she, a while ago? In the program, I mean, um, she danced with Anton Dubeck. Oh, right. But no, I don't really know. I, I, I don't. I only ever really met her at that at that time, and then. Well, and then... it's one of those things. Once you've done it, you all. I mean, it's like school. You say to people, yeah. oh, I'm gonna "Keep in touch with you," and you mean it at the time, but. Yeah, and it was only it was only like a couple of episodes. So again, I was just like in and out. And... But a great sitcom to be in, though. Yeah, it was. And great. it was quite a funny scene as well because you'd been spray painting the wrong With car. With the wrong car. <laughs> so I like that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was good fun. I can imagine. Okay, um, where were we? Uh, I do this all the time, Justine. Um, oh, yes, because I've got to ask you about one of Trace's relatively short relationships, this one with Mark the Dodgy Copper, because he was <laughs> jealous of Barry Grant, and you ended up stabbing him with a pair of scissors, but tell me about that. I didn't enjoy that storyline. <laughs> oh, really? What, because of the rape scene, or...? No, I just didn't enjoy the storyline. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <tell me more. laughs> I think I was, I started having Holly and like, you know, I had to, I had to kiss this fella and I don't know. I just, I, 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 I thought. It was a weirdo character though, wasn't it? Yeah. I didn't think it was very believable. And this is what happens with characters in soap. Sometimes the character just changes. Tracy would not have put up with that. No. There's no way. And there's not one scene where they're actually nice to each other. And yeah, there wasn't actually, was there? No, she throws them out, and then Barry, and then the next thing he's back in the house and he rape, tries to rape her. She just couldn't have put up with that. I don't. There was no consistency with the character around that time. She become really wishy washy. Yeah, I mean, Brookside did that in the later years as well. I thought there was a lot of characters that did out of character mm-hmm. things, like Jimmy Corkill becoming nothing to do with Dean Sullivan, who was great throughout it, but. The storyline I never could believe with Jimmy Corkill in the later years was that he, you know, he'd always been this lovable scally and then he became a school teacher. I mean, how the hell did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you weren't happy with that. I mean, were you co- uncomfortable doing that rape scene? Because I put that up the other day and I was thinking... Oh, I didn't oh. mind the rape scene because I knew it was the last scene. So. <laughs> oh, was that the last time he was in it? <laughs> or your last scene with him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it was Paul Crosby, his name was, wasn't it? His real name. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, sometimes you just, you, you don't like every storyline, do you know what I mean? No, of course. And, uh, yeah, I, I think, I look at it and I feel like you can tell I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. See, and, now you've said that, but I didn't, no, I wouldn't have thought that at all. But now you've said it, I'd probably go and look at it now and try and yeah. look for it now. But, but they're not nice to each other at all, ever. So why not? 
allowing this person. That's not like plausible for me. I did think like, what is she doing with him? Would Tracy have really fell for him? And there doesn't seem to be that much chem. There's no chemistry. They no, seem to no like chemistry. Chemistry. you well. know. <laughs> Barry's there, and yet Barry's in the room as well, and there's so much, like, simmering tension between Barry and Tracy, and I'm thinking, oh, they, them two should just get back together and sob that he one. He chooses off. this. Yeah. It's not believable, is it? No. no. But I still think they were really good scenes. I did enjoy your scenes where, not obviously, um, not enjoy the scene where you're getting right, but I just thought that was a good scene, the way you acted it, I mean. Quite I had to have a body double for that, because really? having Holly, when he's lying on top of me, and then they realised that he had to lie on top of me anyway to do the scenes where you could see my face. So it was a point, absolutely pointless getting this body double in. Oh, right, because he did seem quite scary at that point because he was shouting and... He was a good yeah. actor. I mean, he, you know, he was a good actor. Hmm. OK, well, we've got other boyfriends to talk about afterwards. Don't worry, Tracy. Uh, I've just called a train. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. It's the I don't spirit know. of Gladys. <laughs> Justine, I mean. Oh, sorry, a blooper there, guys. I've never done that before, and I'm always going on about saying like how weird people are when they believe that the soaps are real and stuff, and I've just called <laughs> character name. So sorry. You get a little horn for every time he does that. <laughs> yeah. That's twice now. I've called Nikki, uh, Michelle, Nikki, and oh god. I blame COVID. All <laughs> this lockdown. <laughs> um, right, so that's about Mark. Uh, now, the next one is for all of you. And oh, no, hang on, sorry, done that one. I'm doing it again now. I've lost my place. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Question eight. It's all right. I wrote the same question down twice. I'm, this is what I mean about lockdown. It must be mashing my head. Um, this is all for three because I love that fun period where Rod, Tracy, Diana, Nikki and Tomo, played by John O'Gorman, were all together at number 10. So I imagine with you all being good mates and stuff. I mean, is that when the friendship started between you two, you three girls? It started as soon as we all met, didn't it? Yeah, yeah we, were, we were just friends. Where we, It seemed like we'd always been friends. I mean, yeah. I, did I? Well, me and Paul went to the same college briefly, but I don't think we were in the same year. So we kind of... New, I think everybody knows everybody, don't they, in Liverpool? Yeah. But, so, and we were always just mates. Yeah, he yeah. uses it off. I don't remember when it began. I've got to No, I don't. It's like, you know, we were just... You know, like, sitting here now, oh. I, I wish we... I, I never wish I could go back in time, but that bit, what you're talking about, that bit in the house with the six of us, I wish I could do that bit of my life again. And, yeah. And it'd be a bit longer, mm. you know, yeah. and in... Like I just that bit, it was brilliant because and embrace it a bit more and yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. You just take it for granted though, don't you? Although I did get thrown out, so well, yes, you did. That was Justine's fault, really, wasn't it? Justine came. Well, Justine, in. how did you let me get thrown out? I can't believe it. No, how did anyone let me wear that outfit that I had on? <laughs> Any, oh, those outfits. I come back from the cruise, like dressed like Judy Finnegan, Not like Jane <laughs> McDonald. Jesus oh, Christ, Justine, what was going on there? Like a new, as a new person, didn't she? She came back very sort yeah. of confident and a lot more grown up than she had been before. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> and you just had your breakfast as well in your suit. Yeah. And we felt tan. Yeah, we yeah. Yeah, in the shop for milk in my suit. The way oh, I was just sat, like, casually eating. Like, I remember. I didn't even say hello to you. It was like, oh, yeah. We've well, been yeah. away for about how long? We didn't even go. Oh, hiya! Very back. Oh, hi. Like, Paul yeah, was but... carrying your cases and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was just on stuff in my face with my hand in my pocket. <laughs> go on, Paula. Sorry, you're trying. You're trying to say something. I know. I know. It wasn't. I just. I just remember the false tan really vividly. <laughs> there was. There must have been. There must have been a lot said about that false tan. Talking about costumes, though. You know, I was sometimes when there's a whole house where you get your makeup and your and your clothes and that. And um, I was in the dressing room getting getting dressed in an outfit. And I think Rachel Lindsay, who played Sammy Rogers, came in. And um, I won't say who because he, well, he'll know if he's watching. Um, <laughs> he he lifted an outfit up and she she went, "I'm not wearing that." And he went, "It's okay, Paul will." <laughs> And 
and I was in cardigans constantly. And my <laughs> next door neighbour was like always commenting saying, couldn't they put you in better clothes? Do you know what though? I didn't even have any any costumes, I don't think. Only the top. Because again, like you Paula, they they pulled out these pants once. And it was like, I, and, and they were massive on me. And I was like, they don't fit. So I always, you'll notice today that the I had the, I used to have a rip in my jeans, didn't I, in my bum. And then... Um, that top covered it but I, I, I always seem to just wear my jeans with that big thick belt remember my shoes and then a top I think I was so excited when we went to Rose and I got a pair of LA gear trainers uh -huh. oh yeah Woo! well I know I just I know you weren't keen on trainers <laughs> were you <laughs> oh, Sorry, actually, going back to that do you, that scene I posted the, where you're all where uh, you're playing cards um, one of the producers, I think, Justine, you might have replied to that, but um, so he came along and he said he remembers that scene because when uh, Jason Hope went to stand up, he actually banged his head on the boom mic or something. <laughs> Does that ring any bells? Oh, Alex Kane was that? Yes, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, he was the sound man. Yeah. And Jason Hope, can you any of you remember that? <laughs> Oh, sorry. I don't remember. I don't remember him um, banging his head on the door. Do you? It was on the no, boom. Mic. I mean, on the boom. I've got to answer the door. Sorry, one second. <laughs> it was always a boom shadow or a booming shot, wasn't there? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, uh, Paula. Ah, yeah. Because what well, I've been dying to talk to you about. Around a year after Diana and Rod had married, she ended up um, getting closer to Peter Harrison, played by Robert Beck. Um, and that was the, for the groundbreaking date rape storyline, how that began. So I just wanted to ask, how did you feel being involved with such a pioneering storyline? And also, can you remember the public's reaction to it? Did you ever have anybody contacting you and saying, oh, I, I can relate to what Diana said? Because when this storyline obviously happened, date rape wasn't a common thing back then, was it? Well, or the word wasn't... date rape wasn't yeah, the common it, it, thing what, then, was it? The word, you're right, it was just the word. Mm. Um, obviously, it, it's probably happened since the beginning of time. Um, but good to get the conversation out mm. there. Again, a big responsibility. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's um, you know, I think very tricky for the producers, the writers, and, um, and how they depict both sides yeah of course um, and you know because especially at the time yeah and still now women don't go forward they won't go forward and um, no. and speak about it but being so young again and I, I'm not dismissing like saying that a 21 year old can't have a mind to to actually discuss these big issues I'm just saying to be on a platform with such an emotive and powerful um, and important uh, subject as rape um, I was always very careful about how much I went and spoke about it. In, in again, um, I was asked to go on some um, phone lines, you know, after after the program. Yeah. And I was like, that I didn't like that's not appropriate oh, um, no, because it didn't okay, happen yeah. to me in real life. Mm. Um, you know, there are people who are qualified to speak to people, and I w I wouldn't like that that um, responsibility, responsibility of saying the wrong thing in that situation and, you know, making it worse for somebody. But it was really interesting um, to do. And, and obviously I did speak to, to people who had experienced it. Um, I was I was actually um, encouraged to do that, which was great because it, it was over a six month period. I know you mentioned before, uh, Michelle, about being recurring. I was actually recurring the whole time I was there, apart from that six months, I was only a regular for, for the six months of that entire storyline. So, um, oh, was, sorry, I didn't realize no, it, it's all right, it's fine. And, um, so that was like from morning till night for like six months solid because it was the run up, the actual, and then going afterwards, you know, all the scenes I had with Justine. Um, about it where it came out and Gladys of course and then it was going to be um, to the police getting in, in, investigated myself being the victim twice yeah. and then the court case so it, it went on now the public's response was really interesting nobody's ever been mean to me and I feel quite lucky but a lot of people I believe were siding 
with Robert Beck's character um, because um, I think he was seen as a bit of a pin-up at the time mm -hmm. and Diana was, um, I suppose, in some people's eyes, had led him on um, because oh, she was vulnerable. Um, and But let me just say here and now, it's not a big, like, massive um, reveal because I think after I left, um, Robert Beck's character admitted to Anna Friel that I did say, not me, but Diana said no. So yeah. Yeah. during them being heavily, you know, kissing, and she said no, and he carried on. Exactly. So, yeah, and so the fact was that's rape, and yes. um, and I think I was gone then, but I always think that that part was so important, and I don't ever feel like it was quite completed for yeah. the character Diana. I think they left that bit because I wasn't there when mm. he admitted it. And um, it was actually somebody told me and I had to go and watch it <clears> and <throat> to see. And uh, you, you do, I don't know if the girls will agree, when you're doing any character in any play or, or anything you're doing, you do kind of get um, very, pr not precious, but you know, you kind of want to um, protect your own character. Like yeah. just as you said, when they start doing things that you don't think are right, you're like, oh, and soaps are very different, you know, to, if you get a play, like if, I mean, I'm not going like all highfalutin with Shakespeare, but you know, if you're playing Kate from Taming of the Shrew, you know, she's fiery and feisty and you know what the character is from the beginning to the end. With a soap, it's organic and it, yeah. the character grows, especially for Justine, because she was young going through those years. And and for my character, she went through a massive change mm. from, from not being able to read and write to getting a confidence to getting married, all these massive life things. Mm. And so your character evolves with the writers. And I do think, and the girls might not agree, I don't know, but I think I've spoken to Michelle about this before, that you, um, sometimes we have conversations in the green room and like a few weeks later, I think it was you, Michelle, had, had done this big thing about, about, about men. And then you had this big scene. I was like, I'm sure you said that in the green room the other week. <laughs> <laughs> I think, they do evolve with, there's something we put in to the way we portray them, yeah. that then the writers and the producers go, I think that's where it's going. Yeah. Um, so we, we kind of have an influence. So you think some of them, that some of the soap actors that have been in for years and years and years, they probably have much more influence. I mean, maybe they know, mm. but then they realize, you know, because of the way your face moves on a certain thing, a writer watching it will go, I'm going to do this next time because they're writing it for you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, I went off on a big tangent. No, no, then. no, because it's a very complex storyline. I was just going to add that I did feel guilty because I always believed Diana and I was always on her side. But the way that Robert Beck played it, there was, I always used to think, does he really, but he really believes that he didn't do it. But obviously I forgot about that scene that you just mentioned about how he admitted to Beth Anna Friel's character that, you but know, he did. When he had that scene, he still yeah. didn't think he had. Oh, so, right. So that's what so, I thought. I thought yeah. he is guilty, but he really doesn't believe he is. No. Yeah. If that he, makes sense. Because he didn't, his intention was never to hate her. And mm. he, isn't, he didn't, he didn't think he was. But actually, you that's where education so important and talking about it's important for boys and men that, that you they, they have to realise that no means no you know it's an obvious one but it's that that's it and it doesn't matter even in the middle of intercourse when when a female says no or a male says no mm -hmm. that 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 is it stop because Definitely. going further is is it's illegal of course i mean this is a really groundbreaking story and it was a really thought-provoking one as well because it had this all torn but i will say i was always on diana's side Thank you. <laughs> yes, I was always, and lots of people were that I remember. Oh. But we, I think we've lost Michelle. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Come back, Michelle. Well, she might, she might pop back up. Yeah. 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 I think I must I'm have sent you all along. That's what it is. I'm sorry, I didn't real see. It's been an hour already, and to <laughs> me, it feels like we've been on ten minutes. I had this is what yeah. happens every time. Justine, you know about this, don't you? I kept you for an hour and a half last time, <laughs> so I'll try and make it quick. <laughs> okay. Um. Thank you for that, Paul. That was really good insight because that was a really good storyline. I do remember that. And to think I used to be watching all of that on a Saturday afternoon as a child. Oh. Give Paula the opportunity for the storyline on her own. 
So she'd always been part of, you know, Diana and Rod. Yeah. Before and had her own storyline then, which was quite nice. What yeah. for you to have your own thing? Because you two shared quite a lot of scenes as well, didn't you? Um, in the aftermath of the date, right? Because, uh, well, after the trial, actually, because she was a wreck. I mean, yeah. how did you your character leave, Paula? Um, well, it's it's funny. My my leaving was uh, strange, really, because my last scene was not supposed to be my last scene. My last scene, mm. um, there was talk that um, I was going to come back and have um, Barry Grant's love child. <gasps> I know. No way. So, that would have been great. <laughs> I, yeah, wouldn't it? And then, um, so my last scene was in the car with Paul Usher mm. and something has happened in La Luth, you know, on the parade. And I think I'd thrown, I'd swilled someone because they'd been a little bit leery with me. And after yeah. being post-state rape, I was like not standing for men being in any way like that. Mm. So he was being really sympathetic and nice and he took me home in his car. And we just had this scene where it, and that was my last scene. Oh. And my availability was checked all year for the rest of the year. And then um, somebody wrote a play for me and I did this play and then I did Panto in Wales and um, and and a, and a commercial and I just started working again. And it kind of, you know, it was like ships crossing in the night. Yeah. So, um, and then I think someone else did that. I had the love child. Fran. <laughs> Fran had a love child, didn't she, Justine? That was earlier on, no. Oh, yeah. was that earlier on? Oh, yeah. sorry, I've got the wrong mix. I, I remember Fran had a love child or something off Barry. God, he was yeah. getting everybody pregnant, wasn't he? Yeah, I think yeah, he just I wanted think the know. baby for uh, me, did though. Did you ever have a dalliance with uh, Barry Grant? No, I was such a bad kisser, I didn't get that far. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he brought you in Greece. <laughs> I'm back, by the way. I don't know what's going on with my Wi-Fi. Oh, right. Well, I'll try and make it a bit quicker because I can't believe we've been an hour already, but this is like, it feels like 10 minutes to me. Um, Justine, because um, I, I had to speak to you about this because this was a great uh, part for um, uh, Jonathan Kaplan. That's it, a familiar TV face back then. He was one of Trace's boyfriends in the later years. I'm guessing because he was the boss, power is a great aphrodisiac. And that's why yeah. she fancied him, because otherwise, I have to admit, I would have thought he'd have been a bit too fancy for Tracy, but I imagine it was great. He was great fun to work with. Yeah. yeah, he was lovely, Jonathan, and we were really good mates and we, we hit it off straight away and we became friendly really quickly. And he used to come out with us, didn't he? On a, like a Wednesday night and that. Remember he used to come to town with us and he used to go on my own with him for a drink or we'd go for, for tea or whatever. And uh, I liked working with him because we became mates and we yeah. had to talk about and he was doing other things as well because he was writing as well and um yeah, he was just he was he was great he was just a dead nice fella um, how did that conclude and tracy with... and brian how did that conclude so i can't remember that part i don't know i don't think it did it just uh, loads of things around there i mean my story is very similar to paula's um tracy just had a scene with barry and then was never seen again oh i remember um, we talked about that last time yeah it's yeah. Really not. I just I never understand why they do that. Yeah. So it, it really annoys the viewer. It's like, well, where are they? So there was and loads of things. I mean, Tracy just became so wishy-washy around that point. I, I couldn't recognise her as a character. Looking at some of the scenes now, there's none of the face, you know, the face when she's like you and she just turns and it's like <laughs> you <know, Yeah. laughs> there was none of that. There was no opportunity to do any of that. Um But did you enjoy the scenes of Paul Usher? Because I know that after Tracy had dumped Barry, um, you still had quite a few scenes about Paul. I yeah, mean, but I didn't understand them. Part. I don't know if you, how many times does he say to her, uh, why didn't we get back together? And she, yeah, how many times? Know. That's exactly what I was thinking, three years. That's so we're all scene. waiting for that. Or will they wait? Over and over again. I didn't quite know what to do with it at the time, because I was like, I don't, I don't really understand this storyline. It's like they can be together, but Grace well. is holding back because she knows what he's really like. That's how I tried to read it, but it was like, oh come on, get back together because they were so much, they were quite suited. I thought. I think I think suited as well. Yeah. I I, think... I I need to just correct when it wasn't love child. I was supposed to have his child, but no romance. But oh, right, I see. But, yeah. But that it was going like to be an as well. it was going to be an agreement that I'd have his baby for him, but that that was it. But I think 
Justine's cat Tracy and Barry would have made a great Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they were they they got on, didn't you got on? It was nice chemistry there. Yeah. yeah. But did that story like I didn't understand. I didn't know what was happening in the end. It was just like he'd sweep into the hairdressers, he'd have this competitive uh, conversation, he'd cuss his ear and he'd go. And it was there was lots of flirting, wasn't there? No. Yeah. But it was a bit of a pointless the, the, you know, I just like that scene of you babysitting Fran in Fran's flat and Barry sort of says, well, we could have had a baby, this could have been us, and that was quite a yeah. deep moment. So I like that scene. Yeah, I liked filming that one as well because we didn't have to move around and there was no continuity. Yeah. So we were just basically the pair of us sitting there for like five minutes talking, which was um, which we quite like doing. As an actor, it's nice to do that, isn't it? Mm. Cool. Just, yeah, as opposed to eat, eat yeah. cold food. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can imagine I'd love to see And it was always, I always seemed to eat and everything. Yeah. It was always cold. And I'm like the fussiest eater in the world, so I don't know how that happened. Oh, no. <laughs> well, oh this is Michelle, true. Next question Literally, we can't go out with, with Michelle. She's got to have like an extra hot latte. It can't just be a latte, extra hot. And the menu is like, mm, yeah, mm, okay. Oh, what about the steak sandwich? No burger on the bun. What? There's the steak sandwich. <laughs> but she ordered a steak sandwich, but takes the steak off the sandwich. But the steak on the menu as well, right? Just steak, right? But she still orders the steak sandwich. Oh, God. <laughs> out of the bread. And I'm like, why did you just order the steak? <laughs> <laughs> I can have a burger. Like the you no the bun. bread on the steak. <laughs> just, I'm a nuisance. Don't even go into that story. Oh, <laughs> well. Michelle, there's a question I've been dying to ask you, actually, because um, when you left Brookside, you had, ah, here we are, because you had loads of screen roles after that, didn't you? Including Karen in Backup, Jill Maitland in Spring Hill, the film uh, Under the Strain, Under the Skin, Under sorry, the skin. Under the Skin, sorry. Uh, but I just wanted to ask you about some two of my old favourite programmes, because you were in The Bill and Cold Feet. Yeah, Cold Feet. Yeah. Who did you play in Cold Feet? I, I played... Um... I was with Sinatra, remember Sinatra was in it? And me and Sinatra were um, just out in a bar one night. And again, I was just the friend who was there. <laughs> and um, she went off with um, Jimmy Nesbitt and I, so it was the scene with um, Jimmy Nesbitt, um, John Thompson and me and Sinatra. Um, and it was a tiny scene, but it, I didn't care. It was basically, you know, when, when it's like, you've got a part in Kofi, like, yes! Yeah. And I think most of my lines got cut. But it didn't matter because it was cold feet. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to stand there and say I've been in cold feet. Well, so, and that was great fun as well because they were so nice. They were just exactly the same. I mean, John is brilliant, John Thompson. And um, but they all were, you know, they, they were lovely people. Mm, I love so that. was great. I mean, that would be, you know, what a bit like what we were all like in Brookside. They were the same, you know. They, yeah. they, they play hard and then they work hard and... Um, so yeah, it was brilliant. I loved it. But also, there's another one. You played two characters in the Lily Savage show, which I imagine must have been fun. Oh well, yeah. do you know when we talk about going out? I think we all were going to check into the Betty Ford clinic after that because <laughs> we. It was brilliant. Yeah, I played. Um, well, to, to be honest, I didn't have a part. You had to. Um, I was. There was all the main characters. Then there was like a couple of us that were just sort of. We didn't have parts, so we got we got to name our own parts. So I was Brenda, Brenda. Um, and what was the second part? I don't remember having two parts, did I? Oh, I thought someone. I, that's what I read on IMDb when I was looking on your IMDb. I, I, oh no, I was in his television show as well. That's I think that's what you mean. Ah, so sure. I did the tour, cell block tour, and then um, Paul did a, his own. Um, Paul the Show, and, and I was in that with Sonia, she was in, um, yeah, so, but it, that, that was brilliant as well, from what I can remember. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember we went, we were in Edinburgh, and um, we, we'd we done the show, and then my boyfriend was one of the musicians, so I would obviously hang out with all the boys, and um, and we went to, we went to a bar, and this, and then I think it got closed at seven o'clock in the morning, we were all devastated because the bar was closed and we still weren't, you know, finished. So we, <laughs> we were all like marching up this hill. Our Sharon had come to Edinburgh to see me 
and we were marching up this hill to another pub at nine o'clock in the morning. Oh my God, we were green. We were um, all. Oh. See, these are the things I miss about being young. I mean, but you know what? It was brilliant though. And, and when you're young, it's fine, isn't it? It's, yeah. You could never do that now. You'd just be in bed after, straight after the show. <laughs> but it was such, it, them are just great times. It's like Brookside, you know, it, it was a job, wasn't it? But it was just, it, you, I, I don't, it was a job, of course, but I never think of it as a job. You know, we loved it. We absolutely yes. loved it. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. We, it wasn't like a job, was it? We, no, it wasn't. But we did learn so much, though. I mean, we, you yeah. learned your trade there. Um, yeah. So it was brilliant. And, and you know, as I say, we, if we could all go back tomorrow, I think we would. It would be so funny, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. We did. In that house. Um, yeah. Well, Paula, actually, this is actually fro outside of Brookside because I, I've got to ask you about this. You were actually in a touring production of Read to Sue and Bob 2, I believe. Uh, yeah. 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 Who did you play? Um, I played Sue. <gasps> Sue. Um, now, did you have all those great one-liners? Are we going for a jump yet, Bob? I shouldn't say that, should I? But... I, I had all the one-liners. Um, oh, it was brilliant. I, um, I did two national tours of that all over the country. And I remember on the first night, um, the guy who played my dad in it, we were walking in Bristol and it was a really sunny night and he said, Oh, this is the life, acting, work, and beautiful weather. And I, I looked at him, and because I was still in my twenties, and I'd never forgotten it. Because as the girls will tell you, you know, I mean, I've still got an agent, and I'm still, I still, um, you know, work when I can. Yeah. But it's it's because you're out of work sometimes longer than you do work. I completely understand now yeah. how he felt. Um, I think he was in his 60s, so, um, yeah, but it was one-liners, oh my God, one-liners, there's so many of them, and actually Sue's, Sue's one of her lines at the beginning before the car scene, the first oh, yes. scene, um, she says something about her dad, he's a bit of a C, don't you think, oh. and that was received different in the north to the south, so in the south people didn't laugh, um, but apparently they found it very funny. Um, but in the north, we had to wait sometimes like 30 seconds and then you'd pull a face and they'd keep laughing because the, and if they laughed on that, they laughed the whole show. Yeah. And, um, and that famous scene, by the way, all the actresses that play, Rita and Sue, have to wear at least two, if not three pairs of knickers because the knickers come off. Oh, yeah. So you, have to have, you have to have nude knickers on. So that obviously you've got something on, because <laughs> and all you're doing is going pulling faces while the audience <laughs> laughing while they've got a bare bump doing that. Yeah. <laughs> who played um, who played Bob in that? Um, well, there was two actors. Um, Guy Guy had um, a three a two barrelled name. I can't remember. I think he was in like Midsummer Maids, isn't that? <laughs> um, oh. And the other guy. Um, Oh God, what was his name? Oh, he was so lovely. He was from Manchester. In fact, they were all from Manchester except me and Sylvie Gattrall. And um, we all thought we were doing Manchester accents mm. and, and instead of a Bradford accent. And then we got to um, Leeds and a, a reviewer came who was Bradford born and bred. Yeah. And um, here's me yeah. like six months into this run thinking I've got the accent down pat. We're all doing it. And she said, it was a brilliant show. She said lovely things, but then she said, but the accents are a little bit west of where oh. they should be, apart from Paula Francis, who was Bradford born and bred. Oh. <laughs> and I thought I was doing Manchester. No way. <laughs> so accents aren't my strong point. Oh, no way, but that must have been great, though, to do something like that, Rita Sue and Bob, because it was Andrea Dunbar, wasn't it, that wrote that? Yeah, Andrea Dunbar. And funny enough, you know, I was on stage the night, do you remember when, um, you'll, you'll, well, you'll all remember, I don't know whether you'll remember finding out, but when um, Tony Blair um, became Prime Minister. Oh, yes. And there's a big, long scene in Rita Sue and Bob 2 about um, the government and about the working class, yeah. and it's really powerful, and... Um, it was a guy was playing it then and guy was like near the front of the, the stage and he did this impassioned speech about the working class and at the end of it there was silence and everyone in the audience stood up and was cheering it was like an encore we had yeah. to wait a couple of minutes before we carried on with the show because labor had finally got back into power 
because he's talking about the Thatcher mm-hmm. years and and yeah. how devastating that was for the North. So it, yeah, it was that was a really good time. Yeah, cool. Okay, I wish I could have seen it actually. I do love the film. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to get to the last parts now because I know that we've been on for an hour and 15 minutes and I know, Justine, your husband's going to be saying, come on. He'll be on his table in a minute, yeah? All right, okay. Well, I'm going to be... Uh, let's get to these things. Uh, so I'm just looking through because I can't remember where I've got to now. I'm only messing, by the way. He's not. He doesn't come in like in demand his tea. Oh, right. <laughs> Can you imagine my reaction if he did? <laughs> I could just imagine a tracer reaction, definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, ah, it's a bit more about you your person. What's looking at you, Paula? Oh, what? Where the dog's looking at you? I know. It's just oh. like... <laughs> he, he loves you. Yeah. Right, Justine. Uh, it's just a general question, because I know after Brookside, uh, you did a part in a uh, pantomime uh, and then you left, obviously, of your own choice. All, all the travel. I remember you telling me all the travelling and Traveling, stuff. Traveling, yeah. Because I had a baby. baby and, yeah, a call. Yeah. So my question would be, obviously, if the right opportunity came along, would you go back into the acting industry? Uh, a couple of years ago, I probably would have said no. But I don't... I, you know what? I don't know. I really, really don't With know. With lockdown, you just don't know. Some, if something came along, you just, you know... Yeah, if it was... Right, you think... Yeah, if I didn't have to travel. The thing is, it's about becoming insecure again. If you end up doing something and you leave what you're doing and you're quite happy doing what you're doing mm. and you back that cycle again, it was that that it was that part of it, that aspect of acting that I didn't like. I didn't yeah. like security. Um, I didn't ever want to be a job an actress. It just wasn't for me. No. Um, so I think if it was going to mean that I was going to end up back in that cycle, mm. eventually end up back in that, um, then no, no, I don't. I don't think I'd change what I'm doing now. To, um, I mean, you know, we'd never be on the breadline. <laughs> Stephen, you know, could look after me, but I, I don't want to be seeking for work. I don't want to be in that situation. I know what you mean. You know, and I love the people that I work with at the moment as well. So which is not, really important as well. Yeah, and it? you know, I don't think I'd jeopardize that. Mm. Brilliant. Oh, that's fair enough. Okay. Um, Paula, I just wanted to ask because I know you're very well known in Liverpool, um, apart from Bro- uh, Brookside, because you were voted, I gather, one of Liverpool's most glamorous women. And you run a really popular boot camp nutrition biz- uh, business. So just love to hear a bit, a bit about that. Here's a chance to plug it. Not that it needs plugging anyway. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I actually do. I, I feel like I've had a dual career since. Um, since I was really young, acting and teaching fitness, mm. um, because my parents were um, into fitness and my dad opened a gym when I was 12. So I've been really fortunate that I actually love both very much. Even when I was in Brookie, I'd finish at seven and I'd go to the gym and teach a calinetics class, mm. eight till nine, Monday to Thursday. Oh. So I didn't I didn't swap one for the other. I just yeah. always- You were always that. into that. Yeah. yeah. But the boot camps I've been doing for 11 years, I went back into study when I was 35 and um, got a degree in nutrition. And it's been like a massive part of my life the last 10 years. Um, I met my husband just a year into um, teaching boot camps. And so we've had the most lovely last 10 years because boot camps become like a family um, to to both of us really, because it's so community based, Mm. all ages. um, and, And like the, the older ones my age and, and older because it's literally from 13 to 71 mm. um and that, that our joan is the, the 71 year old she's amazing she shouts at everyone when they stop yeah. and, um, and then the all in between sometimes they bring the children and then they go off to university then they come back i've had um girls that are just starting to go out they come to boot camp then they get um they meet someone so they get an exercise so then they get engaged and they get married then they have a baby i end up going to weddings it's oh, just look. it's it's more than just exercise it's um it's something very special and i'm really proud of it i'm proud to be part of it even mm. though I, I you know i started it it's like i feel like i'm with people who are like-minded and um, it's not like your normal 
um, go to the gym and, and and not all gyms are like that, by the way, but you, you know what I'm saying. It's, yeah. You don't have to be in, um, you know, in a, an open top, fully fit, muscly, you know, there's all shapes and sizes, all ages, nobody's judged and um, we have great music, we laugh and, I, and I've got a great venue and I just, I absolutely love it. So, um, yeah, and the last year has been a, a challenge for all, everyone, the whole Yeah, I was going to say. Um, but I've gone online as well and, and I've embraced it. I was so scared at the beginning. But you know what I found, and it's it's amazing this. And Michelle, you might be because Michelle's gone online as well with her work too. That it's kind of like it's married both skills. So we've got our teaching skills, and then that first day in front of the camera, I was in the room on my own and um, teaching a Pilates class. It's like being like Shirley Valentine talking to the wall. Yeah. You know, you're talking for an hour and you don't know whether anyone's even there. When I do YouTube, not Zoom, and um but afterwards, I was like, I like that. I, 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 I like that I can use the skills that I got earlier on in Brookie to, mm. to now. Um, you know, and as you know, I'm not like a short of a few words to say. I'm a bit chatty. So <laughs> I managed to oh. fill an hour as well as the exercise, but chat all the way through. So it's been, it's been brilliant and I love it. So, that sounds a really yeah. wonderful life. A lot of satisfaction as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of satisfaction because it does change people's lives. I mean, my husband's father got um, diagnosed with um, stage three kidney um, disease um, a few years ago, and he's fine, he's fine. Mm. And he was told he needed to lose weight. And, you know, the NHS is so overwhelmed. There's not a, a dietitian for every person. Mm. Um, and so I said to him, you know, I'll write, I'll write something out for you. Well, I wish every client was like my father-in-law because he took me, he must have had so much confidence in me. He followed everything. He lost about three stone. He's kept it off. He, he reversed all of his diabetes readings, his cholesterol and his high blood pressure. And he looks amazing. And he's probably given himself years more. And do you know what? A tiny part. I played a tiny part in that because he's so good the way he follows it. Um, my mother-in-law won't be quite so happy because she was fuming at the diet. <laughs> She's a bit like you, Michelle. She's no. like particular about the food. So can you imagine? I've told, I've said, you've got to eat this, this and this. She's like, oh my God. She said, that diet you've written, you've got me up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michelle, I was actually, I was going to come to you as well because um, you've actually, you're actually a dance teacher of a family run business. I've seen some of your videos as well. Yeah, yeah, and I've like done Paula that. Paula was just saying, I imagine it's been quite hard this last year, obviously lockdown. It has been, it's been, it's as, I'm kind of the same as Paula really, because we've all, I've always paralleled it with, with acting or whatever, you know, um, and it has been hard. It, the Zoom, we were talking about this a while ago, me and Paula, and my mum actually said to me, oh, you can tell you've done, you know, acting because, you're quite comfortable on Zooms. Mm. Um, it's not the same. And uh, and Paula, you, you'll know, it, it, it's awful when you teach street dance or tap because God love the kids. It's not designed for um, music. And so basically it's like, miss, and I'm going, you're out of time, you're out of time. I'm like, miss, you keep glitching. So God love them. I mean, they've been amazing, you know, coming on every week and still I'm learning and keep going and stuff. So hats off to them because they don't have to do that you know what i mean they could just sit at home and, and be on the whatever it is that they use these things these days <laughs> what are they called then i'm like a proper old woman there those things yeah. <laughs> so so they're brilliant but yeah they, we've been I, i've been teaching i remember my first day teaching with my mum i was six 16 I think and I only I didn't teach I went and helped and I always liked it and then of course um it, it just carried on from there so we've done it forever and it's it's just basically luckily thankfully something that I I, I adore doing it you know it's it's great it's like again it's when I have to do another type of job I always say to my dad my dad laughs because I go oh it's tedious and he says you said everything's tedious and I'm like no but like teaching and acting that, that's not tedious that's great you know we, that's you just love that but so I, i'm quite lucky that you know there is a family business and i can't wait probably like paul to go back and see people we went back for about five minutes didn't we um oh. and the kids are like oh miss it's it you know, they, they were so i uh, blessed them they were crying when i we got into lockdown and of course i was like oh, we'll only be off for two weeks don't worry about it that's exactly what I thought, and then... And I'm like, oh my God, a year later on Zoom, five, six, seven, eight, with my tap shoes on, 
Yeah. <laughs> the floor is a disgrace. I feel sorry for my neighbours because it's like... Oh, my God. <laughs> well, they have to understand when these things are going on. I know. Well, they're lovely neighbours, so that's fine. But I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'll be back at school soon. I'm like, tap, tap, tap. Like Julie Walters in that film. With <laughs> <laughs> my only one. The Elliot. <laughs> well, I shall wrap up now. But finally, just a quick question from all of you. I think I know what the answer will be anyway. Just to go back to Brookside, um, a rerun. What do you think? Do you think it should be uh, shown again, the repeat of the old episodes? I personally, this is what my petition's all about. I personally think it shouldn't be stored away in the archives gathering dust. It should be out there to enjoy it. Although I have heard that it's something to do with financial things and that's what's stopping it and being I don't know around. why, because we get about 10 pence an episode. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, there yeah. you go then. So I should keep on with the Channel 4 then, shall keep I? Keep on, yeah. So do you agree, Justine? What I, I think, I don't would you like to see it rerun I'm... again? Yeah, I mean, it got rerun, didn't it? And then it kind of just like um, just disappeared. Didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was on UK Living, wasn't it? And then it just yeah, it yeah. stopped. And that was yeah. George's time that it was still on, wasn't it? It was Brookside was still running. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think, I mean, Definitely, a lot of people yeah. say, well, it won't be cutting edge and it won't be as cutting edge as it was. And I said, well, of course it won't. I said, but it holds. Oh, yeah, it. like like classic Emmerdale is when you look back at that. Do you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. It, it's time. It, it, it is what it is or what it was. Yeah. I think it really holds a mirror be perfectly to the time. Brookside more than any other soap. I feel like ITV and BBC are a lot prouder of their soaps than Channel 4. Mm. I think they've really ignored it. I mean, I heard that that's why, you know, they lost interest in it anyway, but yeah. I shall keep on with the petition, but Paula, what do you think? Do you think it should be rerun or left alone? 100% and actually bring it back and give us all the job. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, well, I, to be honest with you, I was just about to say, when I very first started the petition, it was to bring it back for like specials of the characters and I was told by somebody in a production company that used to work there and they said it was to do with finances so it won't happen so that's when I decided to do the reruns so I mean what would your what are your personal thoughts about it coming back would you do you think it would the work the closest the closest gone hasn't it and yeah that's what my I've always said that because the close has gone then it wouldn't make sense because in in the final episode the houses were being demolished anyway yeah, so it's gone so oh. Michelle, sorry, I was going to ask you, what do you think? Do you think well, it's going to rerun? we still have to watch Porridge, don't we? So why not? <laughs> exactly, we've got Corrie, we've got The Bill, London's Burn, we've got all these classic programmes, so there is a market out there. So yeah, I mean, what, there's no reason why not to show it. I mean, it's it's it was great, it was what it was, and, you know, I, I, they could bring it back, you know, they could do it. They've done, they've updated all the soaps, I mean, so there's no reason why they couldn't. It'd be interesting to see if they did bring it back, how it would pan out and stuff, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's no reason why they can't, I don't think. But, no. you know, I'm ever the optimist, so... Well, so am I, because people say, oh, don't bother that. I'm going to continue with the petition because, obviously, I'm collecting yeah. signatures as it goes on, and I'm just thinking, well, it obviously supports my cause more than Exactly, anything. and there's no, the, I just, there's no reason not to put it on television because, you know, I mean... It saves us watching the Kardashians, doesn't it? As much as oh, I love yes. the Kardashians. Yes. <laughs> Any final words from everybody before I finally release you all? Because I know you're all probably thinking, God, I'm dying to get off and have a bottle of wine or anything. Although I just <laughs> started. No, it was lovely <laughs> to come on eventually, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We've tried so long. I, I would like to say that um, I would love there to be, if not Brookside, another Liverpool base yes. something. It's yes. so needed, you know, and I mean, even Northwest based something yeah. because there's so much talent in the city. And mm. um, and I think a lot of not just the, the actors in Brookside, but, do you know, like from Live of Beds and and they had Liverpool one and there's been quite a few little things, but a really good, even a, a sitcom 
you know, like like bread, you know, something yeah. it needs there needs something. So if there's any producers out there watching, you know, there's there's a lot of actors that be ready to go and not just us three, loads of loads of actors. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of great so actors writers. in Liverpool, there really are. And I miss hearing the Liverpool accent. Uh, I mean that's another story, the um the great actors in Liverpool, isn't it? And castings, but we won't go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't go there. Yeah, totally. But yeah, even the production side, you know, all of the sound guys, the the camera guy, all of them. I know we've got moving on, but we need something else. So yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh, because moving on, Jimmy McGovern writes that, doesn't he? That's um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So now I've he's done one of them. I don't think he's done social media, is he? Um, Jimmy, I don't. No, I don't know. Because yeah. I've I've been asked to like interview some of the writers, so I would like to do that. I know you're in touch with one of them, aren't you, Justine? So maybe you could have a little word with your friend. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Uh, Oh, well, listen, I've really enjoyed it because I've been waiting for you all to come on together for ages. So are we finally done it? Yay! Yeah. Now, listen, while I'm here, because these are, I've spoke to Justine about this, what I'm planning to do in the summertime is hopefully get as many cast members of Brookside as I can in one big Zoom sesh. Would you two, would you all be up for it? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's not a boot camp night. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll try and get it so it's everybody can involve. So I'll try and get Paul on. So go ahead. Yeah. We've got Justine, we've got Paula, we've got Michelle, and we've got Annie Miles that's confirmed now. So I need oh, to speak lovely. to other people. And so that'll be about in July time. So I shall be in touch. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Ian. Oh, okay. thank you. Nice to see you, girlies. Don't yeah. let for all the clips. I shall put this on the YouTube, uh, YouTube later on, so look out for the comments. And uh, okay. thank you very much. And oh, I'll thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. See you Bye. 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 Bye, girls. Bye. And good night, all. Good night. <laughs> night. I've got to turn it off. Oh, I won't be going to bed yet. <laughs> right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.